If you live in the Southern Hemisphere, the kinds of smart tariffs you'll be offered are a little different to the rest of the world. In this video, part 3 of my series Winning with Smart Tariffs, I'll explain to you why that is and how you can use this to your advantage. Hi, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. This is the third in a four-part series on Winning with Smart Tariffs where with the right strategies you can save a lot of money and potentially even make some money as well. In part one we set the scene for the series, then in part two we concentrated on template style tariffs in the northern hemisphere. This video then, part three, is for those living in the southern hemisphere. And later in the final part we'll be looking at tariffs that track the wholesale cost of electricity. Okay, let's get started. You might remember this solar irradiance chart from the second part of the series. Here we looked in detail at the kinds of template smart tariffs that are available to people living in the Northern Hemisphere. If you haven't seen part 2 yet, I strongly recommend you watch that first before continuing with this video, as it sets the foundation for what we're about to discuss. In this video, we'll be discussing tariffs available to those living in this region of the world, the Southern Hemisphere. And immediately you can see that in this region there is generally more sun throughout the year. A lot more sun. And that has a pronounced effect on the tariff templates being offered by the energy providers there. If you remember, here's the typical template offered in the Northern Hemisphere, which has an off-peak import rate in the early hours, and sometimes also a peak import rate in the evening. And the reason for that is due to the typical energy demand curve for countries in that region, which is lower in the early morning and higher during the day, with peak demand in the early evening. You can see that the off-peak import rate is designed to encourage higher energy usage when the national demand is low, and the peak import rate is there to encourage lower energy use when the national demand is high. Let's now take a look at a typical template tariff for countries in the Southern Hemisphere. This one is for Southern Australia, and you can see it's very different to a Northern Hemisphere template. If we superimpose what would be a standard tariff import rate, you can see that from midnight to 6 a.m. the off-peak import rate is half that of the standard tariff. Then from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. the import rate is 25% more than the standard rate. And this rate is repeated again from 3 p.m. until midnight. But look at the rate between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. It's lower than even the off-peak rate, about a quarter of the standard rate. Why is that? Well, there are three factors that combine to drive this. The first is the sheer amount of sunshine over the year in southern Australia, as we can see in the global solar irradiation chart from earlier. The second factor is the huge amount of currently installed solar generation capacity right across Australia, which can capture all of that sunshine. This chart from the Australian PV Institute shows the growth of this capacity over the last 10 years. And that growth has been quite impressive. There are a whopping 3.6 million solar installations right across Australia, which together can supply an impressive 33 gigawatts. Wow! And finally, the third factor is the effect of all that supply capacity on Australia's daily demand curve. We can see the effect visually using this interactive chart created by Leading Edge Energy. Here I'm looking at the daily demand curve for South Australia in 2012. You can see that demand drops off from midnight down to its lowest point around 4 a.m., then steadily picks up until it reaches a peak at 9 a.m. It then holds relatively steady for a few hours before rising to another peak at around 7 p.m., before steadily falling again throughout the night. If we look at the same demand curve two years later, we can see that after the morning peak, the demand drops between around 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. before rising to the evening peak. Let's fast forward another four years to 2018, and you can see the dip in demand around midday is even more obvious now. And this is because of the growing amount of installed solar generation capacity. Self-consumption of that capacity when the sun is out means there's less pull from the grid, and so demand drops significantly. And as we continue through the years, you can see that this dip just keeps getting bigger as the installed solar generation capacity grows. Now you might be wondering why this curve is also known as a duck curve. If I show you all the years at once, you can see it forms the shape of a duck. Can you see it? How about now? The effect of this duck curve reducing demand in the middle of the day means that wholesale energy prices are pushed down at the same time. This is just the effect of supply and demand principle in action. 
When you have a high amount of supply, but a low demand for that supply, prices reduce in an attempt to balance demand with supply. And going back to the template tariff from earlier, this is why prices from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. are so low. Let's take a look then at an actual tariff available today in South Australia. This tariff is offered by Energy Locals and it's quite a complex template. The basic price per kilowatt hour throughout the day is 33 Australian cents. But there's a peak period between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. when the price goes up to 51 cents. And a second peak period between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. where the price is even higher at 75 cents. Then we have a solar sponge period where prices drop dramatically down to 8 cents. So already we can see a strategy forming which would be to charge your home battery during these six hours of very cheap import then use that energy to cover your usage during the second peak period. And if your battery was big enough, it might cover you from 5 p.m. all the way through to 10 a.m. the next day. And this tariff also comes with an export rate. I mean, it pays virtually nothing for export most of the time, just two and a half cents. But during the two peak periods, it pays 33 cents. And this represents a further opportunity for those with batteries and that is to force discharge some of the solar generation stored in the battery during the second peak period. Any energy not required by the home at that time will be exported back to the grid at a rate of 33 cents. And if your battery has far more capacity than your daily usage, you could even carry the remaining stored energy in the battery over to the next day and force discharge it during the first peak period. We can test out these strategies if we use a modeling utility like this one I developed recently called Solarasma Pro. You can see I've already set up the utility for the Energy Locals tariff that we're looking at. And we'll use one of the preset usage templates with an overall daily usage of 15 kilowatt hours. If there is no solar and battery installation at the property, the daily cost would be $6.16. But thankfully there's a lot of sun where we are, and so with a solar installation the cost reduces to $2.08. And the reason for this is not only that some of our usage is covered by solar generation, but we're also generating income from the excess solar that we cannot use and therefore export back to the grid. And this adds up to $1.34 of export income. OK, let's add a small battery to see what the effect is on our daily costs. We'll add a battery with a 5 kilowatt hour capacity. What you can see happening now is that the battery is being charged with the excess solar until it becomes full at around 10 a.m. Then the excess solar is exported back to the grid as before. Now the battery remains full until around 6 p.m. when it starts discharging to meet the home energy requirements and it does this till the end of the day. Now if you remember from part two in the series, in order to get an accurate costing, we need to ensure that the starting level of the battery is the same as the end of day level and we can do this by clicking this button. But you can see our battery is not quite big enough as it's running out of charge by 2 a.m. the next day and so we're having to pull a little from the grid again. If we increase the capacity of our battery by one more kilowatt hour, you can see that we're no longer pulling from the grid and so our overall daily income has increased slightly to 43 cents. And of course if your daily usage is higher than 15 kilowatt hours, you can try various sizes of battery to see what's best for you. Remember to take into account any minimum state of charge and also the charge and discharge rates of the battery in order to get an accurate estimate. OK, but what if it's not so sunny one day? What does that do to the figures? Let's reduce the sunshine down to 30%, representing a cloudy day. This results in an overall expenditure for the day of $1.96. And that's because there's not enough solar to fill the battery. But there is a trick we can do to fill that battery. Remember, up until 4 p.m., it's cheap import because of the solar sponge period. So let's always force charge the battery from, say, 2 p.m. for two hours. That way, if there's not enough sun to fill the battery, we'll use a little bit of that cheap import to finish the job. And as we can see here, this reduces our overall expenditure for a cloudy day to $1.03. So is there anything else we can do to get the best from our battery? Well, yes. If you remember from before, we can force discharge some of the solar generation stored in the battery during this second peak period. Let's first bring the sunshine back up to 100%.
and then change the battery to, let's say, a Tesla Powerwall 2, for example. Now that battery has a capacity of 13.5 kilowatt hours, and it also has a slightly higher charge and discharge rate of 5 kilowatts. And let's now force discharge the battery during the second peak export rate. You can see that this results in an overall daily income of $2.70, pretty good. In summary then, a good sized battery is the order of the day for energy tariffs like this. As a minimum, your battery capacity should be able to cover your usage between 4pm and 10am the next day. And if you want to make good use of export rates, then choosing a battery larger than this is a great option, especially if it has a high discharge rate and your local network authority doesn't restrict your export too much. And those with batteries with very large capacities should be able to generate a nice income, all while helping out the grid and of course saving the planet at the same time. Not bad. And if you're looking at what size battery to get for your own installation, the utility we've been using in this video is ideal for trying out many different scenarios before you commit to a purchase. And getting access is easy, and you'll be supporting all of the work on my channel at the same time. Just sign up to my Patreon using this URL here. Thank you. Okay, we've come to the end of part three of this series. There's still one final part to come, and it will be all about tracker tariffs. Please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it, and please don't forget to like this video as well so that others get the chance to see it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon.